My name is Shakira. I live in Guadalajara, Mexico. I am from the United States, Atlanta, Georgia. I moved to Guadalajara in June of 2023. So I've been in Guadalajara now for about nine months and I'm in absolute awe of this place and I love it. Guadalajara was not on my radar initially, and in full transparency, I never heard of Jalisco or Guadalajara. However, I knew that Mexico was definitely going to be the place that I relocated to when I was looking for a place that gave me a city feel, but just also made me feel like quaint and at home and small town. Guadalajara continued to come up. And that's when I began to do a lot of research, looking at YouTube videos such as this channel, reading different books and looking at it from the perspective of expats as well as locals. And everyone was in awe of this place. So I gave it a shot. February of last year, so almost a year ago, I took my first scouting trip to Guadalajara and I fell in love. <laughs> My initial plan on moving abroad was to wait until I retire. So I was traveling to different countries to see what would be a good fit. But again, my heart has always been Mexico. Uh, but with the burnout of just going into an office every day, being in the States, being in corporate America, I knew that I needed to make the switch immediately. So I took a career sabbatical and moved here. When deciding to get back to work, I wanted to make sure that I found a place that the internet was good and Guadalajara was presented as like the Silicon Valley of Mexico. So I thought this is perfect. So coming here, um, I transitioned into 100% rem remote work and I have a lot of success with working online here. Sometimes I work in my apartment, Sometimes I work in the co-working space in my building, but most of the times I go to one of the hundreds of cafes in my neighborhood, set up in the open air, in the sunlight. I get to observe, have nice coffees and work. So I get to choose where my office is going to be, which has been one of the highlights of moving here. Americana, AKA the number one coolest neighborhood in the world, may I add that. <laughs> I love Americana. It is always something to do. It is a young, trendy, lively neighborhood. So if you're into clubs and bars, you have those, but it's nothing short of restaurants, no matter what type of food that you enjoy, no matter what you want, you can find them here. But I also enjoy this neighborhood because there are different places for different art scenes. So whether it's small boutiques, um, pop-up shops, markets, um, museums, you can find everything that you need in this neighborhood and most importantly is walkable and that was one of my top requirements for selecting a city and a place to live so it checked all of the boxes for me honest which i plan to be okay i'm going to think objectively about if there's anything that i dislike I do believe that I am biased to Mexico. So I'm gonna put that out there. It was the first country that I traveled to over 25 years ago. And I think that kind of just stuck with me. Anything I dislike, maybe the imports on certain things, but I've learned to find alternatives of just local places I can get a lot of things to make it more affordable for me. I guess like my pet peeve sometimes is, and I think it's the neighborhood that I'm in, because it's so lively and trendy, sometimes it's loud, it's noisy, but that's expected <laughs> in a party neighborhood. But I've also found some amazing neighborhoods that are super quiet and quaint. So it's just a matter of choice in that regard. So I can't even say I dislike that. I miss my friends and family in the U.S., but I do not miss living in the U.S. 
The longer I'm here, a lot of the conveniences that I was once accustomed to, the need for that has kind of gone away. Um, what I mean by that, for example, is like Amazon in the States, you can order something that night and it's at your doorstep in the morning. You don't necessarily have that here, but it is, it's helped me to reduce like my sense of urgency on things and expecting stuff right away and like slowing down. So at first I thought that that was something that I missed, but as time goes on, I found that a lot of that stuff isn't even necessary. I don't miss anything about it. When I made the decision to move to Mexico, a lot of people were questioning why. I remember once a friend asked like, is that safe for you to be there? And closer towards the time for me to move, they would send me like articles of like, is it safe? And I would just send them back a website that I found that shows like the safety index of where we were in the US. And I said, well, according to this, it's a lot safer than where I was. But some of my friends know me to be a traveler, a free spirit. So I was like, oh, that's typical of you to like get up and change your whole life and sell everything and leave. So it was kind of expected. I think for the most part, people know that I'm not just sporadic. And if I made the decision, a lot of thought and research went into it. So they were more so trusting my intuition and decision, not necessarily where I was moving. Well, making the decision to bring a car to Guadalajara was something that initially I did not think was going to happen. My goal was to sell my car before moving. However, things did not work out. So I decided to drive back. So I found a few Facebook groups that gave advice and tips on which routes to take and what to expect, especially with the toll passes, because there's just like the technical part, like how do I get permission to bring my vehicle into the country. So I did a lot of research there and learned that I needed to get a permit to drive my vehicle in Mexico. I paid a, a fee that was equivalent, I want to say to about 480 US dollars for one year that say you have permission to drive in Mexico. And I keep that paper in my car. And my understanding is you can renew it every year or if I leave the country, I have to go back to the permit office to say I'm leaving the country and that fee that you were charged will be refunded back to you because you have checked in with them. But the drive was five days. I did want to make sure that I paced myself and I had my partner to drive with me. I think that was about 27, 28 hours of driving. It wasn't as bad as some will try to make it. It was actually a lot easier than what I anticipated. I think the hardest part for me was finding the permit office. <laughs> it took me three tries, but once I got that, it was down packed and it was a smooth ride. Driving in Mexico is a learning experience. <laughs> so, one of the things I don't like about Mexico is driving in Mexico, okay? Um, it is defensive driving one-on-one, but I will say that Mexicans have this spatial awareness that's superhuman, that they can get really close and navigate and drive. Meanwhile, I am freaking out, trying not to hit anyone, but they are navigating seamlessly. That took a while to get used to, especially in the the roundabout, they'll go from the left all the way to the right. <laughs> but now when I'm driving, my friends are like, oh, you're a pro now. I said, I've just learned to just go with traffic. You will get there with, without harm. I started my process for temporary residency in Atlanta before coming to Mexico. I completed the application. I scheduled an appointment at the embassy in Atlanta, verify all of my documents were correct. And they asked me to come back later that afternoon. And when I got back, they approved me for 
uh, one year temporary residency. And it was based on economic sovereignty. So showing that I was able to sustain myself while being here. I had a really easy process with residency. Um, the only hiccup that I had was the Kahe process. So when I came to the States, my passport was stamped as a tourist and not a, a resident. So I had it stamped incorrectly. So when I went to let the Mexican government know that I was here, they're like, no, you have to leave and come back to get the correct stamp. So that was a lesson learned. I used an attorney to help me with my process to make sure everything was perfect. And I went to my attorney and then my attorney was able to finish my paperwork to say, yes, I'm official, I'm in Mexico. So there are many ways of finding an apartment in Mexico. My plan is always the easiest way. So just like residency, if I can pay someone to do it for me, I will do that. And this is the same with the apartment. So I chose to work with a realtor. And one of the things I enjoyed about working with my realtor is she asked me lifestyle questions versus do you want two bedrooms or like that. So my new place is in Providencia. It's different than uh, Americana where I am now. It's across the street from a park. It is one block from a yoga studio and a four minute walk to a vegan ice cream shop. So I was like, perfect. <laughs> where do I sign? I had to do the application because when I went to see the apartment, I fell in love and I said, let me think about it. And I said, let me look at it one more time. And when I arrived, she said, someone else put an application in. And I was like, no, <laughs> I want this place. So she said, if you hurry up to submit all of your documents, the owner of the apartment will look at both and decide who they would like to move forward with. So that's what I did that same day. And the owner decided that they would move forward in terms of verifying my information. To qualify, I had to show my income as well as my bank statements for three months. I also had to provide six references, so three family members and then three non-family members, and I needed a guarantor. So someone, a Mexican with property that would essentially be my co-signer is what it was referred to in the U.S., vouching that I am a good renter and that I am going to pay my rent, and that's my approval. So in just a few days, I will be signing for my apartment and getting my keys. Super excited. Rent is my biggest expense. So initially when I rented my current apartment, it's 24,000 pesos. And I thought in comparison to the US, that's great. However, the longer I live in Mexico, my brain now like thinks in pesos and I'm like, that's on the higher end and I'm able to find something else. So the new place that I am moving to is much lower, um, is 16,000 pesos. As far as utilities, uh, I have my water, gas, and electric. And those are pretty affordable for me. I love the fresh air. So I just opened the windows and I was able to save money there. And, and of course, the internet bill. My internet bill currently is about 459 pesos a month. And that's probably on the higher end compared to the gas, which is every three months or so. The water, I think, is every other month. And I was fortunate enough with my current apartment that the water, there's a credit from the owner, so I don't even pay the water bill, so. I chose Guadalajara because I knew that I was coming with limited Spanish. However, I found this to be a very easy process um, and a, a great place to come to learn. One of the first things that I did was enroll in the University of Guadalajara. They have a language school prolix. So I took Spanish classes there. It was so impactful taking the Spanish classes, not only learning the language, 
but also learning a lot of the customs and traditions and nuances. However, in navigating around the city, it's really easy. A lot of people know English here. Some will ask if you prefer English or Spanish. Some will want to practice their English with you. So I, I always like that. And in situations where I encounter individuals that do not know English, I just use Google Translate or what my limited Spanish is to navigate and it seems to work. For the most part, people are really nice about it. And I think it is a, a great place to come if you do not know the language, but I also highly recommend and encourage everyone to learn the language. The people in Guadalajara are extremely friendly and I've visited other places in Mexico and I think Mexicans are friendly overall, but it's something different about Guadalajara. When I first got here, it did take me a little while to get accustomed to it because I was always think like, why are you being so nice to me? <laughs> like, what do you want from me? And it was nothing. They just really wanted you to have a good time and they wanted to make sure that you were comfortable so now it is good. It's, everyone treats you like family, especially when they know that um, I'm here and my family is in the States. They just, for holidays, like, do you want to come with us? And, you know, it's just, it's nice. And it's that sense of community that really makes me feel even more comfortable being here. I made friends when I got here. <laughs> I knew no one in Guadalajara. It was really easy to make friends. I went out to um, a few events. Uh, we went out and we met and they began to just take me around the city and tell me about the different neighborhoods. And then we just form, we just talk about life and everything. And I think, you know, through those conversations, they can sense my genuineness and my my want to really release my old life in the U.S. and really make a life for myself here. When I first got here, I only met like other black expats because it was normal. I felt comfortable. I didn't have to think through too much. It was good. The longer I'm here, I'm realizing the importance of making friends from locals, right? Um, one, it helps me to improve my language. Two, it helps me know how to better navigate everything. And then three, it gives me a great appreciation for the culture, right? Because they teach me things and I'm not learning it through a third party, i.e. another expat. I'm learning it through somebody that in Guadalajara is a tapatia, like born and raised in Guadalajara. So it's been a really enriching experience to have Mexican friends. It's been a lot easier than what I anticipated. But I think the more of me releasing what I knew was processes and things, i.e. what the states, how I grew up, and just asking what should I expect has allowed my process to flow a lot easier for me. So I think that's the biggest thing, like shifting your mindset. I feel safe. <laughs> No one bothers me. They'll kind of look, and I think what I've learned to realize, they're not looking at me it, like othering me. I'm a bald black woman walking through the city. You know, like, how often do you see that? So it's just like they're looking, and then they'll say, you know, good morning, good afternoon, or something. And then they go about minding their business. Like, no one bothers me. They are, people are helpful for me. And I think because I'm so open and curious, it helps me a lot. And this is my ace in the hole every time when they ask me my name and my name is Shakira. Every time, instant friend, <laughs> instant friend. So at first for a very long time to my parents, I'm like, why would you name me Shakira? But now to my parents, thank you. You must have known that I was gonna to move to Mexico. So it works, <laughs> it works. <laughs> as uh, someone a part of the LGBTQ community, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be comfortable with myself. 
Just like I researched and found out Guadalajara was the Silicon Valley of Mexico. Also Guadalajara was like compared to the San Francisco <laughs> of Mexico. So I'm like, oh, my people are there. <laughs> so coming here, it is refreshing to see. Uh, and I see young old, same sex, it doesn't matter. No one bats an eye. So that was something very important. If you can see my shirt here, we had the Guadalajara Gay Games. I call it the Olympics for the gays. And it was amazing. So just for that to be here, the first in Mexico, that lets you know where things stand. So I felt even safer. So it's amazing, I love it. So moving to Mexico has improved my health tremendously. Since I've been here, I've lost almost 40 pounds. It's really because I have a more active lifestyle. So I walk or bike almost everywhere that I go. I have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. The food quality is better, it's less preservative. It's, it's just a lot healthier. One of the things that I struggled with when I first came was not only my weight, but my blood pressure. And since I've been here, I've been working with an amazing doctor. So I've been able to decrease my blood pressure and she's monitoring it. And something I found was so amazing in working with her, she asked me how drastic did I want to do the change and if I wanted to do natural holistic or if I wanted to keep medicine. And I had to ask her to repeat herself because that was something I never heard of before. Like you actually giving me an option to come off of this medicine for my blood pressure. And she said, if you're serious about it and you're actually going to follow all of the steps, then yes, I can help you do that. And for me, that was amazing because when I was first diagnosed with high blood pressure 12 years ago, the doctors in the state told me that I would just be on this medicine for the rest of my life. So it was good to know that now I do have an option and everything has been working for the doctor. Um, something else that was amazing in working with the doctor is she actually made house calls. So that's been life changing for me. And I'm just anxious to see where my health is going to be next year. When I told her my overall goal, she also connected me with a nutritionist to help me with my diet. And that nutritionist also helps me with like workout plans. It's been amazing working with the doctors here in comparison to in the US and it's extremely affordable. I recently had my annual physical just to do a wellness and it was 70 US dollars. And that also includes a follow-up virtual visit where she goes over my lab results and check in with me to make sure that I'm on track. So all of that was included and the service is just remarkable. Emotionally, I am in a much better place than where I was last year. Oftentimes, I'm just walking down the street or sitting at a cafe, and I think, man, this is my life. It feels like a dream sometimes. I tell people that, like, my life is easy. I have challenges, but it's so easy. <laughs> it's, it's slower. One of my things that I'm most proud of is that I don't wake up to an alarm clock anymore. Like I just wake up when I feel rested enough. I'm a lot happier. I feel a lot freer. I don't feel as though I have to be like a slave to my job in order for me to enjoy my life. And when I'm working, I can actually stop to have dinner or have lunch or, you know, take care of myself. So this was one of the best decisions that I've made. And I wish that I would have made this decision a lot sooner. My advice to other expats living in Mexico would be to release your American mindset or wherever you're from, release the previous mindset and really begin to immerse yourself in the culture. Meet other Mexicans, locals, ask them about their life ask them about their 
customs and their culture. Get out, participate in things. There are many opportunities for you to volunteer. So volunteer at different places so that you can really get to know the community. The other thing I would encourage you to do is to shop local and meet your local store owners, vendors, go to the market to really give back and contribute to the local economy. And don't be afraid to speak Spanish <laughs> because my Spanish is not the greatest, but it has improved drastically because I am not afraid of saying things incorrectly. I say it, I learn it, I get out here and I try to just live like the locals and it has been an amazing experience. Take the leap, jump, do it. You'll be fine, trust me. There are millions of people that have done it before you and there will be millions of people that are doing it after you. So trust yourself. If the instinct is there for you to go, then just go. Thank you for watching this episode of the Mexico Relocation Guide. I hope that I have shared some type of tip or story that inspires you to live out your dreams and best life of living abroad. And if you are considering Mexico, consider Guadalajara because you would not be disappointed. That's it. Okay. <laughs>